the primary benefit conceptually of crystalline materials is that we don't need to know anything about the full material. We just need to know about a teeny, teeny, tiny piece of the material that repeats infinitely to understand many of its properties. That teeny, tiny bit of the material that we need to know about to understand the structure and properties of a crystalline solid is called the unit cell, and it's the smallest repeating unit of the crystal structure. It repeats indefinitely throughout the solid, assuming we're dealing with a perfect crystal. So the simple cubic lattice is one example of a crystalline lattice, and this repeats on and on and on almost forever, of course, until we hit the actual boundary of the physical material. This simple cubic lattice simply consists of atoms or molecules sitting on the vertices of a cube. So the black dots you see right here, the brown spheres here, these are the lattice points of the simple cubic lattice where atoms are sitting. Now, we'll do this for the crystal structure of the simple cubic lattice, and we'll do this for a number of different cubic crystal structures. We're going to start digging into the geometries here and appreciating how many atoms are contained within each unit cell, as well as some of the important dimensions found within each unit cell. And this is going to allow us to calculate densities, ultimately, of a material, crystalline material, just by knowing essentially the density of the unit cell and scaling it up to a macroscopic level. So, for example, in the simple cubic lattice with, say, atoms at the vertices of a cube, we have each atom touching along each cube edge, and that's happening right about here. That means that the length of a side of the unit cell cube is equal to twice the radii of the atoms involved. And here we're looking at a pure material, so each atom is the same, so two times the radius of that atom is equal to the edge length of the unit cell, L. Twice that radius is equal to the edge length. So the full volume of the unit cell, then, we can calculate as L cubed. It's a cubed. L times L times L, length times depth times height, something like that. That's going to be equal to 2R cubed, 2R quantity cubed, or 8R cubed overall. That's going to be useful as we calculate densities. An important number to keep in mind when looking at any crystal lattice, any unit cell, is the coordination number. Coordination number is the number of atoms directly touching an atom within a crystal structure. And we want to be very careful when looking at a crystal structure for the first time to distinguish between atoms that are actually directly touching in direct close contact or just happen to be close to one another. There are a number of positions, especially in the more complicated lattices we'll look at in the next video, where it may look like atoms are touching when they're really not. And distinguishing between atoms that are touching and not is very important. And thinking about coordination number will help us start to think through this. For example, in the simple cubic lattice, each atom at each corner is surrounded by six other atoms. So this atom, for example, in the center has six atoms that are directly touching it. Its coordination number is six. Just to point out an atom that's close but not touching to this atom in the center, these atoms that are diagonal to the central atom are not directly touching it. They may be close to it, but they're not in direct contact, so they aren't counted toward the coordination number. So atoms in the simple cubic lattice have a coordination number of six. Earlier I alluded to the fact that we can use unit cells to calculate the density of a macroscopic crystalline material just by calculating the density of the unit cell itself in the appropriate units. And this problem is an example of this. The problem tells us that the edge length of the unit cell of alpha polonium, one of the forms of solid polonium, is 336 picometers and that this substance crystallizes in a simple cubic structure. And it wants us to determine the radius of a polonium atom which is a relatively easy problem, as we'll see, and the density of alpha polonium, which is somewhat harder, but is very intuitive if we understand how to think about working with unit cells. So here, I very strongly encourage you to either draw a picture of the unit cell or get your hands on an image of the unit cell out there on the internet or in your textbook. Having that visualization in front of you is going to make this a lot easier because on some level, particularly to think through the radius and the volume part that goes into density, you're going to be thinking geometrically. That's hard to do without a picture. Make it easier on yourself and get a picture in hand. 
So let's draw the simple cubic lattice. Each purple dot here is a polonium atom sitting on one of the vertices of the cube. I've defined the edge length of the cube as A, and we know that from the problem. It's 336 picometers. Now what I'm going to do is spice up this picture a little bit by drawing little bits of the atoms that are touching along each edge. We remarked earlier that in the simple cubic lattice, atoms touch along the edges and nowhere else. So every purple sort of cross you see here is a place where two atoms are touching. Now, one thing that we should point out now about the simple cubic lattice is that one total atom is contained within this structure. Now, how do we know that? Well, this can be a little bit difficult to see, but at each corner of the simple cubic lattice, we have an eighth of an atom. Check out this picture right here. We've got one eighth of the entire atom cut off by this cube vertex. And we have eight total vertices in the cube. So with eight total vertices and one eighth of an atom at each vertex, we're dealing with one total atom contained within the cube. We cut off everything that's outside of the cube. Only one atom total remains within the cube. So each unit cell contains one atom. And for the other cubic crystal structures, we're going to determine this. This tends to be a larger number for the more advanced crystal structures we'll look at in the next video. This is going to be useful for determining the mass of polonium contained within the unit cell, which we'll do here a little bit later. Now, what about the radius? What about part A? Well, we know the edge length, 336 picometers. And because we know that the atoms are touching along an edge, the length of the edge is twice the radius. Each edge has length 2r. So simply dividing the edge length by 2 gives us the radius. 336 picometers divided by 2, 168 picometers is the radius of alpha polonium. Very straightforward as long as we understand the geometry of the simple cubic crystal structure. Now what about the density? Well, density is mass divided by volume. That's still true for crystalline solids for any substance, right? And I encourage you to think about the mass and volume calculations completely separately. The mass, and, and what we're really doing here is calculating the density of the single unit cell using the idea that that unit cell is repeated infinitely throughout the material. So the density of one unit cell is equal to the density of the entire material. Density is an intensive property, right? So the density of the unit cell is the density of the entire crystal. The mass inside that unit cell is simply the mass of a single polonium atom. This one polonium atom relates to the fact that we concluded there's one atom inside this cube total. So one polonium atom, the mass of that, goes into this mass calculation. What's the volume in which that one polonium atom is existing? Well, it is the edge length cubed. It is A cubed, or 2R quantity cubed. So let's take what we know and start plugging things in. Let me start with the denominator here. So we know the edge length actually already, A cubed. So we don't even really need the radius. Sometimes you'll be given the radius, then you'll have to double it, cube that. Here we're given the edge length directly, 336 picometers cubed. That is the volume of the unit cell. What's the mass contained within that unit cell? Well, it's the mass of a polonium atom. What is that? Okay, that's going to be a really, really tiny number. But one thing I do know and that I can get from the periodic table is the average atomic mass of polonium, 209 grams per mole on a molar scale. That's for a mole of polonium atoms. If I want to know the mass of a single polonium atom, well, I divide by the number of atoms in a mole. And that is simply Avogadro's number. So by dividing this 209 grams per mole by Avogadro's number, that'll give us the mass of a single polonium atom. Now, the hardest thing about all this is we're going to have a density in grams per picometer cubed, and we typically want it in something like grams per centimeter cubed, grams per milliliter, maybe kilograms per liter, something like that. And so we've got to convert the picometers cubed into centimeters cubed, and I won't wade into the mathematics of that in this video. I'll just state for the record that the density is 9.16 grams per centimeter cubed after the dust clears dividing by Avogadro's number and converting the units. So this problem goes to show you that with an understanding of the geometry of the unit cell, how many atoms are contained within, and the molecular 
mass, or the molar mass, I should say average atomic mass, of the atoms contained within, we can get a very robust value for the density of the crystalline material. 